Hey folks, if you're studying economics or are just curious about the subject and want to know more, then welcome to the channel. This video explores economic choices made in production of goods and services, and it's one of a series that covers the content of the OCR and AQA GCSE economics courses. Please stay tuned to the channel for more content and please feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below. Factors of production is the economic term for all the resources in an economy that can be used to make goods and services. These are usually limited or scarce in some way, and so producers will have to make decisions on how best to use these factors. Assuming that firms aim to make the most profit that they can, decisions by firms will be guided by the wants of consumers, because consumers will be willing to pay more for goods and services that give them more benefit or utility. We can split the resources into four groups, known collectively as the factors of production, depending on their characteristics. Land is all natural resources, naturally occurring or farmed. It's not just the ground area. And we say that this land is rewarded by the payment of rent. Labour is the human resources, the workers within the economy and their skills and abilities in the jobs that they can do we say that they are rewarded by wages. Capital is the human made assets that are involved in or assist in the production process, but they aren't used up in that process like the land resources can be. Examples of this are the machinery, tools, vehicles, buildings, as well as the infrastructure of the economy, such as the road and rail, phone and broadband and utility networks. And economists say that this factor is rewarded by the payment of interest. Enterprise is the final factor, and it's the combining of the other three factors of production. It's a human factor, pulling together the other resources and taking the risk of putting that business idea into practice to create goods and services. The person who organises this and does this is known as an entrepreneur, and examples of these are business owners and managers and they're rewarded by profit. Factors of production will be used in different amounts and ratios depending on what's being produced. Hundreds of years ago, production would have been mostly in the primary sector, the growing and extraction of natural resources, for example, farming and mining and fishing, using land, labour and enterprise. Over time, the advances in technology and spending on capital has allowed a shift toward production in the secondary sector manufactured goods and construction. For example, improvements in efficiency have allowed us to produce more with less that frees up labour to provide services in what we call the tertiary sector. And we'll look at this more on the topic of efficiency and specialisation later on in this series. These days, entrepreneurs will still make decisions on which combinations of factors of production to use, whether to be more labour intensive or to be more capital intensive. These decisions are influenced by what's being produced, what skills are required, and whether labour or capital is more suitable and efficient for the task. These decisions will determine how much of each resource is used. The buying and selling of factors of production takes place in what we call the factor market. This isn't a single physical place, but market is the term we use for anywhere that exchanges occur. Participants here would, be, would include those from the primary sector who are supplying the raw materials from land and also households who are offering their labour as workers in return for wages. Demand for land and labour is derived demand. That means it's derived from or comes from demand for the goods and services that it produces. Demand for wheat, for example, will be derived from firms wishing to buy it to use in producing bread, as will demand for the labour of bakers. Finished goods and services are sold on the product market by the firms that produce them to buyers such as consumers or other firms. We can also term consumers as households because they spend the money that they earned from selling their labour on the factor market to buy those finished goods and services. That's it for this video. If you've learned something, then please smash that like button. Check out the news summaries that link to what you see on the news to what you're learning in class. And please subscribe for more economic content coming your way soon.